Folks, these are the best days of our lives. Oh boy. Oh boy. Welcome back for another Vanderpump Rules recap. We are covering episode three of season 11 and what a season it is so far. Listen, on the positive note, we finally got to see Sir, uh, the, the fantastical restaurant. Uh, I, I, it's second to only Rainforest Cafe, in my opinion. And I always had that thought. I've said it before. Sir, if they really wanted to extra lean into the hysteria, hysteria, every 15 min minutes, they need to lower the lights, pump out the Vanderpump Rules theme and just spray out like uh, like a scent between like Red Bull and vodka and Marlboro lights, like every 15 minutes, just fully lean in. And I also think they should sell action figures and other kind of tchotchkes outside because Lisa only sells like fancy candles and hats, really high price point. We're talking like 70 bucks and above. But we need like little tchotchkes. I want little keychains. Like you just got jacked at Sir. Like, you know, I went to Sir and all I got was this lousy t-shirt and an STD. Like things like that. You know, I want like a picture booth back in the Sir alleyway. And we finally got a scene in the Sir alley. I mean, Sheena and Sandoval in the Sir alley. So much history there. Every time they're back there, I would like to imagine the, like these it's just ghosts like every every cast member i don't want any of the cast members to ever perish but if they do i feel like they're going to be chained to that sir alleyway they're just going to haunt the sir alleyway until the end of days you know it's like oh the ghost of Jax taylor is back here uh oh the ghost of Kristen doty is back here i smell marlboro lights um so there was a lot of really uh, there, oh God, you know, I was just, I keep thinking about how to talk about this season because we're coming off, obviously, um, you know, uh, Katie and Schwartz's divorce. <laughs> no, we're coming off of Scandaval and it's weird. Like Sandoval's back and there are some things that are really funny. There are some things that are really horrifying and sad and trigger warning esque. Um, so there, there, it's a mix of everything, but it is such a weird season. Like I was thinking how, um, I used to tell you guys real housewives of Salt Lake city really reminded me of a David Lynch film. It was like Lynchian. I was like, man, this is all just weird, messed up. It feels like a fever dream. This isn't that this is a straight up horror film. This is a straight up. Uh, this season is a horror film. These people all, are, are all chained to this show. They don't want to be around each other. I mean, they're doing, but that's what's fascinating to me about it. It's like, this is just straight horror because most of the time, if you cheat on your nine year girlfriend and a seven month relationship, you don't have to then go do a TV show. You probably shouldn't even do a karaoke band. You should just live out your days. But Sandoval is, you know, not forced. He's not forced, but his ego is having him be on screen. So it's hard because at some point it's like a horror show mixed with a political campaign uh, is that Sandoval is campaigning to show us his real heart, to show us that he is still a great guy. And it's hard. So it's very confusing. You have these two things. And on top of it, you have all of these voices. And I'm not talking about just the cast, but I'm talking about me. I'm talking about all the, all the other podcasts. I mean, we are podcast heavy in terms of Vanderpump rules at this point. So you have to piece together all of this information. And I wanted to read, which by the way, how are you? Are you good? How was your Valentine's Day? Hey, huh? Good. Did you get a, eh? who? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. But also if, if, if it didn't go well for you, don't worry. You, you screw that. Valentine's day sucks. We're good. Uh, but I hope it was great. I hope it was great. I wonder what Tom Sandoval got his new girlfriend. Like I wonder, I, but also do you think Tom Sandoval's new girlfriend is eventually going to be like, um, Tom, listen, I know you're trying to reclaim the lightning bolt. You're buying a lot of lightning bolt jewelry lately. Could we chill? Because that does remind me of your previous relationship. Oh, you, you mean Ariana? No, the, the Rachel one. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that, dude. Oh, uh, should we have one? Should we have like a thimble that represents our love? Um, wow, shit. Um, like the moon? What about the moon? Do you think? I just wonder when this new girlfriend that he has, this model girl, you know, like, you know, they're obviously in the gung ho phase where she's showing up to his shows and Billy Lee's posting of like, oh, my God, favorite couple ever. Take several seats, Billy Lee. Just warm into this. My God. Voice. Um, 
but I got this, uh, I got this, this is really interesting to me. I wanted to read you this, a, a listener sent this and I thought it made, I thought it was just really valid. Um, okay. So this person writes, uh, Hey Ryan, new to your podcast. What if that was the message? New to your podcast, period. That's a great message. That makes a lot of sense. No, thank you uh, for joining the podcast and thank you to any new listeners. Uh, it says, wondered your thoughts with taking all the sides portrayed via various podcasts on our favorite reality shows. For example, VPR, listening to the Tom's podcast, Sheena, Rachel, Nick Vialli. How do we get the full story on what happened? Who's in the right and wrong? Is it just a mixture of everyone sucks, but also hurt in the process? Is there really just one person to take the responsibility of it all? I definitely have my own opinions, but I'm sure there's more to the story than I know. And then do we have the right to study and decide and make God's decisions to what's right and wrong? Just a few things I've been thinking is listening to these different perspectives. I love this message. I really thought, you know, and I, I, I know these shows are silly and I like to come at it from a silly angle, but I thought that was so great just about thinking about a viewer of being so passionate about something like, you know, their, their sports teams at the Super Bowl is like the right and the wrong of all of this. Now, the reality of anything, and you know, because I think sometimes we divorce ourselves from our actual situations in our own lives and we realize, oh my God, look at how many mistakes I've made throughout the decades. But like, the thing is, yeah, you know, yeah, it probably at the end of the day is God's decisions, but I, if heaven does exist, I would love if God you know, he's like, oh my God, I'm a huge fan of Vanderpump Rules. Tom, what the fuck did you do? I saw everything. Now, if God was able to come out with a podcast, <laughs> hey, Teddy and Tamara, try to get God on your network. Um, we, you know, we'd have a ball game, but it's kind of left in our hands in a lot of ways. And like I said earlier, there are so many voices that it can be maddening for the audience, I'm sure, because everybody has their side of the story or a little piece of information. And the other thing is that most of the pieces of information you get are just flat out wrong. But think about it in your own life. That's the only way, you know, and, and when I used to really try and be trying to be an actor, that's what you would do. You would, you know, get whatever character you had and you would try to say like, okay, how can I relate this to my own life as like an entrance point into a character? So you have to take this of like, okay, have I been cheated on? Have I cheated? Uh, what was my reasoning for that? Um, and Sandoval, uh, I, I think, I think we will never know the full story. I mean, we know uh, so many of the brush strokes on it, right? We we know exactly what happened. But like I said in previous episodes, it's very different is that Tom, I think, used this Rachel thing as the inciting incident. He did not want to, and I'm more and more convinced of this every week, he did not want to be with Ariana towards the end, especially but he did not have the balls to do it. So he used the Rachel thing as the inciting incident, even though he was going to choose to reveal that much later. Like, I think he had a whole game plan in his head already about how he wanted. Like, I think he scripted it out. Like, I think he really just saw, I think he sees his life as a reality show now. And like I said, a lot of these people have mush for brains from being on the show for so long. I think TV does that for you, especially TV that you play yourself. I mean, that just has got to really confuse how you behave in real life situations when we celebrate bad behavior, when we do throw our opinions in. But for Tom to have the lack of self-awareness to not realize that this would be a big thing, that we would really, you know, that that he thought, oh, they'll realize I'm not Jax. They'll realize this or look at Schwartz did this. Jax did this. Oh, you know, DJ James Kennedy did this. I think, you know, I think this is all going to be fine. I think he scripted this out in such a way in his head. The, the problem is the guy can't write the problem. You know, like he, he's not good at scripting things out. He's good at big moments. He's good at paying for the fireworks for DJ James Kennedy and Rachel's engagement for Richella. He's good at the broad gestures, like the overt. He's good at the love bombing. And I don't mean just in terms of uh, people romantically in his life, but he's good at love bombing the audience. He's, he is one of the nicer people that I've met on this cast. And, you know, he will leave you feeling good. He's very sincere. He's very, uh, you know, he's very excited. He likes to see you excited. I think those are all great qualities. And I don't think that leaves just because he made a really fucking horrible, horrible move. But I think what the, the issue with Sandoval is, is that his gigantic ego is still not letting him fully admit the real story is that, you know, that these 
were his actual emotions. And I think he's hiding under this banner of, no, this is true love with Rachel. When, I mean, God, I, I hate to say this every week. I, I really don't want to stand up for Rachel and Raquel, but she is, and this is not, this is, Ariana is not a part of this, but in this situation, she seems to be the only person that has taken actual accountability and then thought, hey, I actually want to know why I behave this way and how I can change it because I'm still young and let's, you know, like, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know how you guys see it. And I know a lot of people, I've read uh, some of these people that disagree with me, but my God, I mean, she actually put her money where her mouth is and checked herself into a facility. I think Tom's out there wandering in the desert, just getting angrier and angrier because he actually doesn't have a real voice, a real person to not lean on, but to help him understand his own behavior. Because as Ariana and others point out in this episode, he is surrounded by yes men, which is so funny at his birthday party. They cut from them saying that yes man thing to actually Tom's birthday party where each person he goes up to, Billy, Kyle Chan, and Jason, the uh, drummer manager, are like, yes, Tom, yes, Tom, yes, Tom. Like that's dark because they're just reinforcing his anger. They're reinforcing exactly how he wants to feel about himself, that the world is against Tom. So we need to stand up for Tom instead of going, you know what? I, I understand completely why the world is against Tom. I also understand I put myself in this situation because of this reality show that I get paid very well for. Like I said, if the reality show didn't exist, it would not be this thing at all. And if Tom truly truly cared. And you got to be gentle about this because, you know, in trigger warning, he, you know, we will talk about suicide uh, because he does bring this up. And that is something very serious, you know, like there's no, you, you throw that out there, that's got to be taken very seriously. And I always, I always, I've said this on not just Vanderpump Rules, but any show, once that gets brought up and if it gets brought up on camera, I always feel like, man, why are you letting him film? Like literally, you know, like put his paycheck towards just really good therapy and say, come back when you've got a grip on this and a handle on this, because yeah, it's got to be a lot. It's got to be a shit storm. It's got to feel horrible. Like I don't doubt any of those feelings. I just feel like the lack of accountability is the thing that keeps coming up with Tom. It's a repeated thing. And like I said last week, the bummer of it is with that Nick Vile interview and Billy Lee and all of these things is that you already have a spoiler, you know, a spoiler alert that, oh my God, he's getting madder. He's getting angrier even after they filmed this season. So there is no real resolution. And the funny thing is, and Tom says it himself at the very end of this episode. God, I feel like I'm preaching right now. <laughs> yes. And on the seventh day, Sandoval said in the back of the certain, no, he said, listen, dude, Ariana is like the only person that has the right to like go down low and like do shit to me, but she doesn't want it because she's not like that, dude. Like Ariana is the, everybody's crying in the show except for Ariana. And I like people will confuse that statement as, oh, she didn't care. No, is that she actually set up finally clear boundaries and is going to not let this show or these people pierce her bubble. Because we did not have cameras up when she actually cried. And I think that is a real sign of strength. Like, I really do. And she is the only one deserving of crying, yet everybody else, including Tom, is crying around her. And I love that Tom does say that at the, the end of the episode to Sheena and the Sir Ali of that. But I also love that, like, Tom then goes on to bitch about her handling of the house in this episode and since then. So which one is it, Tom? Is she hitting below the belt or is she not? Because here you said she's not at the beginning of the episode with Lisa, who he came. He was very, very aggressive with Lisa. Oh, man, Lisa. And by the way, you could tell the the, the misogyny runs deep with Lisa Vanderpump. My God, I, I, I saw I felt like she was getting excited when Tom was yelling at her like she will stand up for a man on Vanderpump Rules. Uh, way quicker ever than a woman on Vanderpump Rules. And the only funny thing is, the only thing that it gave her a little bit of pause this time, because the ratings were so damn good. The ad sales were so damn good. But I think that's something interesting to watch. But, you know, I I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm bummed. I'm bummed because, yeah, we will never get like the full story. We will, there will be details of the Rachel Tom relationship that we won't really know. You know, it is interesting how it's presented in different ways as time goes on. 
oh, Schwartz knew much earlier and knew how deep it was. And then it went from, oh, it was like, dude, whipped cream from like the movie Varsity Blues. I didn't know how to have sex. I was whacking off to porn in that Howie Mandel interview to now it was a deep love. Rachel is his best friend haul this shit and then to gaslight Rachel because she's not calling on his birthday. She's in a mental health facility. Like the fact that he is still ballsy enough to feel bad is woo, but it shows you the ego, right? It shows you that ego. And I feel like that's going to be Tom's villain for himself. The rest of the season is just that ego is a lot of people will, you know, and I think we're going to see, and we've seen in the preview that I think he goes to scream therapy or, you know, there's a lot of different things where he's going to try to get out this anger. And I just don't think it's gotten out. It's going to have to work itself out naturally, but I don't think, I, I, I think Bravo needs to put its foot down except for this show and just say no, no cast members can do podcasts anymore. And if you do your own podcast, don't talk about Vanderpump rules, find something else to do. It's fascinating for the off uh, the audience, but it can also be, really time consuming, but at the same time, I think it takes away from the overall story of the show. And then it gets comments like those of like, well, what, what, what should we think? How are we going to get the full story? We're never going to get the full story. We're never going to get the full story. Think about how many things we're finding out now from like Kristen Doty's podcast or Sheena's podcast or any of these, uh, that happened eight years ago that happened nine years ago. We're going to keep finding out little pieces of information as the years pass. It's it's like a science project at this point. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 you know, I also with the, the suicide stuff and Tom, which I did find really heartbreaking. I also found it heartbreaking with Schwartz talking about his his brother who p- potentially has cirrhosis. These are really intense issues. These are really, really real life issues um, on a reality show soap opera. And so it's interesting when they try to include these because then the show is forced to somewhat handle them. So you have these weird like juxtapositions of not the silliness of a cheating scandal, but the insanity of the cheating scandal. And then you they throw in, oh, yeah, by the way, my my brother just went into rehab again, like just kind of a thrown away thing. And I'm like, that's the real thing right there. Holy shit. How are you dealing with this, Tom? My God. Um, But also, I do want to remind people with Sandoval, he you know, weaponized Ariana's suicidal adulations. Remember he was talking about, was it, uh, was it on Howie Mandel's podcast? The, my favorite podcast of the year where he said like, Ariana was like threatening to like hurt herself. If I didn't like, I left her dude, like he revealed that about her. That was her story to tell if that even happened at all. But he revealed that about her. He also threw that out at Sheena at the very end of like, Oh, that, that podcast was with Nima. I had to talk Rachel down. Like Rachel, you know, like uh, insinuating Rachel was going to do something really bad about herself, which once again, like how is Rachel listening to podcasts at the mental health facility? Like I and also, the thing is, we are now kind of not trusting Tom anyway. So anything that Tom says in this show is suspect for me is like, I don't necessarily believe it. And that's where these podcasts, then it's like Rachel's podcast will fill in the blanks. And that's why it's probably doing really well right now. That's why Ann, assistant Ann's podcast is doing well right now, because we feel like we need these blanks filled in. Like, it, this is so unbelievable. Oh, OK. Well, have a good day, folks. Bye. <laughs> no, let's get you want to get into the episode. Let's get silly. Let's get silly. Let's get into it. Let's uh, let's. do. So this episode is entitled You're Not the Queen of the Group because Tom Schwartz was like, Ariana, you're not the queen of this group, dude. And this is the description that the cable company gives us. Schwartz hatches a scheme to bring the gang back together. I like that they treat it like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. The gang, or like the friends group. Hatch- and by the way, hatch a scheme. Schwartz doesn't even like isn't able to hatch a, like a, a skincare routine. Hatch a scheme? What are you talking about? He's just like, I want Tom to be here. <laughs> There's no scheme. I just think everybody should hang out with Tom. Like a scheme. Give me a break. They couldn't even cheat right. What are you talking about? Hatch a scream. Like hatch a scheme cracks me up. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm just very excited to be doing this again. Oh my God. Hatch a scheme. Why are we giving this man this much credit to hatch a scheme? And then the second part of the the uh description says Ariana sets boundaries with everyone. Ariana sets boundaries with everyone. 
so definitive. I love that though. Like in real life, that's what you want people to do, right? Is set boundaries. But then she's like, how dare Ariana set boundaries for herself? How dare her? Like, I mean, it is funny. And I will say it just, this is a horror show. These people are all chained together and they're trying to escape and they, you can't even set proper boundaries. Like, listen, I, I truly know these producers care about this cast, but it is funny because it's like, a, it's a, it's a gotta be a hellish job because they're still producing a TV show. And it's like, yep, setting boundaries. Totally. That's exactly the advice I'd give to my friend. Do I want you to do it on this show? No, please. No. And if you do, could you fight directly with Sandoval while doing it? Like that's, that's what this is. Like, I love this cat and mouse game of like Sandoval having to sit like two rows over in Sir, you know, eating shitty pasta, you know, just to be close to the group in case Ariana has to go take a poo and may accidentally see Sandoval. I mean, they're just probably praying for accidents like that to happen, which I love at the end when Sheena pops in. She's like, oh, you're here. <laughs> That's so funny. So we start off as we do every episode previously on Vanderpump Rules. Nick Lane, I love you. And we get a recap of the scenes that we've seen so far. And it's like, what is it like having to share a living space with your ex? Fucking stupid, Ariana says. Awkward. And then the scene of Tom with his assistant, Anne, of like, tomorrow's my birthday. And she's like, happy birthday. This Anne, like I said, worst job in show business, but she has a hit podcast now. It's called We Signed an NDA. Uh, believe me, we're trying to get her on the show, folks. We're trying. We're trying. She's very nice. We're trying. Um, and I, I was right last week. She did. She was in the improv community at UCB. I knew she looked so familiar because I used to do improv like a decade ago. Yeah, you're like, of course you did. You probably did show choir too. Yeah, I did. Okay, calm down. But anyways, this Anne is having to, on top of managing the scandal, is also having to throw Tom a party. I think there is something that I would, if I ever got to talk to Anne, I would ask, hey, were you surprised Tom wanted to throw himself a birthday party after all of this? Like that he wouldn't have opted for like a mellow self-reflective birthday, maybe a year by himself on a mountain. And I don't mean the mountain where special forces, you know, like I mean an actual just like just meditating, trying to like maybe look at the ocean, something like that instead of let's see how many friends I have. Which Sandoval, anyways, Ariana says, I'm going to call the cops if he has a party. And then we have that scene of Sheena going, what if I, uh, what if I did emo night and DJed and good as gold emo screamo cover. And then we had the meeting of Schwartz and Sandoval. He's like, I'm sorry. I know what I did with terrible. And then where we ended last, last week's episode was DJ James Kennedy popping by Sandoval's birthday party. And Sandoval, I really will, will say, he really does look like early Marky Mark uh, at his birthday party. I mean, he's leaving his his uh, his little little top, his little blouse, um, his little mafia little teeth. What do you call? I was about to say it. The 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 we used to call them the blank beaters, and now I don't think that's appropriate anymore. But it's the what do they call? Oh, God, tank tops. He's wearing his little black tank top where Marky Mark would just like show us all his abs. But he does look like Marky Mark in this. And DJ James Kennedy kind of comes in hot, but just like, when are you going to give me the apology? And he's like, oh, apology for what? The ultimate betrayal. I love it. It's like, the ultimate betrayal. You iced me out of the group when you were banging my ex, Rachel. I, I mean, this is the blind leading the blind here. Like I said last week, like I love DJ James Kennedy and his witticisms, but the fact that he has personalized this, another person personalizing it potentially more than Ariana, who is actually in the relationship. He's like, you did the ultimate betrayal to me, DJ James Kennedy, guys night. And you can tell Sandoval's like, oh, excuse me, the ultimate betrayal. What are you talking about, dude? When you did that shit with Kristen, oh, we're not going to talk about 10 years ago. No. And then we ended last week where DJ James Kennedy pissed. He whipped out his DJ wiener and peed all over a bush. And Allie, who was, you know, very wisely waiting in the car, was like, oh, that's Ariana's bush, too. I do love. He's like, I've grown up. 
I've changed. I'm maturing in this group. It's it, it, it's it's horrifying to see what Tom Sandoval did, but I am going to piss on this bush. I will whip my wiener out on a public road. And by the way, like I always, it's like right off a main drag. So I just imagine people are like, "Hun, was that DJ James Kennedy with his wiener out peeing on a bush over there?" Also. You know how they said on that Nick Vile podcast that um, Sandoval and Ariana, they live right next to Brecken Meyer, the actor from Clueless. Now, uh, did you, I, Brecken Meyer all of a sudden was in the news this past week because he is now dating Kelly Rizzo. Now, if that name sounds familiar, Kelly Rizzo is Bob Saget's um, uh, wife. Bob Saget unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. And uh, she has now found love again with Breck and Meyer. So they are together. And I saw a paparazzi shot. I was like, why does that street look familiar? That's how broken my brain is that I see shots. I'm like, that street looks familiar. And it's like, they're, now it's paparazzi for Tom and Ariana on that street and for Brecken and this new relationship with Kelly Rizzo. And I'm like, God, this has got to be like, is this bringing property value down around Valley Village? It's just, I mean, it's like a two for one with these TMZ people if they're parked outside this like neighborhood. I mean, just wait until the valley, the valley pops up again with the Jax and the Doty of it all because Jax lives in that area. Doty lives in that area, which, by the way, um, I Bravo. I know some of the people over there listen. Um, first off, bang up job. Please let me talk to somebody in production. Please, 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 please. I'll give you edit control. Please, please. I'm begging you. I want to talk to somebody on production, please beg. Anywho, they keep showing the same Valley trailer for the Jax and Dodie spinoff. I'm begging you stop playing that and start giving us some clips, just like a 10 second clip, just like Jax yelling at somebody or something. I don't need to see him in the toy kid car anymore, please. I'm begging you each week, show us 10 new seconds. We already get it. Like, yeah, the Valley is coming, but I want to start seeing actual footage. Please, please, please. He doesn't have to be good. Like I'm telling you, just Jack's angry and said, he's trying to grow up, but he can't. The Valley. It'd, it'd be perfect. So anyways, that's where we ended last week's episode. We start this week's episode like music. And we're still at Tom Sandoval's party. And Sandoval is talking to Schwartz like he goes into the kitchen. He's like, dude. Uh, and Schwartz is like, oh, he, he bailed. He dipped out. He's like, yeah, dude. He was like, um, you know, he was talking to me. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry for not like reaching out to you. And he's like, come on, Schwartz. I, I want to talk to you. Let, let me go lock. Let me go lock lock my door. Let me go lock my door. I love that <laughs> Sandoval, like, go lock up your bushes, dude. He's not going to come in and pee in your house. Like he's literally just pissed on your boy. Like I love that he said, "Let me lock my door." Like there's a mad man, there's a mad DJ on the loose. And Schwartz is like, "Oh, dude, that was like that was just like one minute, and he dipped out." Now Maya, Ariana's dog. Um, remember Ariana's at at uh, emo night. This I I felt bad. I feel bad for Anne every week, but now I'm feeling bad for Maya because Miles Maya is literally like, "What is this shit show?" Like legitimately i do not feel i'm around the right people right now i know i probably like is there any way i can uh get a, like an emotional support license and i can go to like emo night because i'm sitting here having a full-blown conversation with billy lee and i'm a dog <laughs> so schwartz is already like oh shit because schwartz wants everything to work out hey why don't you sit down for a second schwartz he's like are you sorry for the ultimate betrayal and I'm like, the ultimate betrayal. And then Schwartz, Schwartz wisely goes, you should have said yes, dude. You should have, like, that's it. That's Schwartz knows it entirely. Smartest thing Schwartz has said, just fucking say yes, dipshit. Do you want, like, just say yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. So Schwartz is kind of bummed out. And Sandoval's like, oh, I guess I didn't say yes. I mean, when he did that shit with Kristen, first of all, and Schwartz like, oh, no, oh, man. No, James literally did the exact same thing to me, only way worse, dude. And that's my ex that he's fucking her in my bed using my condoms. And they get a good shot of Maya the dog. And Maya is just like, zoiks? Ooh, God. Where's my relative Spuds McKenzie? Like, this is, I don't, ah, uh, this is not good. Also, I love... That Sandoval is like, no, he did the ultimate betrayal on me nine years ago. And he also, I love that Sandoval also goes, but he did like he he used my condoms. And I'm like, well, somebody's using them at least. Like, 
I love that he outs James as a cad, but also a cad that uses protection. But this thing is really burned in Sandoval's brain. But it is interesting that this is now conveniently popped up as a trigger for Tom. Uh, didn't come up at this past year's, you know, really reunion. But now he's like, no, dude, that dude owes me an apology. He's the reason that I cheated on Ariana, dude. It's the pins and batteries and the the condom usage with Kristen and Doty. Um, so, oh, you guys. Schwartz is like, um, I thought there was real hope for a productive conversation. Um, so this is alarming to hear. Um, okay. Uh uh, I did too. I wanted it too. For future conversations, that's not going to be the last time someone comes at you. And if you get like upset every time, it's going to have a really negative impact on your life, which it's like going to have. You mean it already? Gonna, wait, what might happen? What, what might happen, Schwartz? Like you think it could get worse? Like It's going to have a real negative impact on your life. We're there, man. We're in the negative impact crater. Like, and then we scoot over and the music uh, licensing on this is great. It's like, got him back then last night where it started. It's kind of like emo-ish. Uh, and they're like burning through the streets of LA. You said that everything was fine. And we're at the Avalon for emo night right off Vine in Hollywood. Slow burn and no, this isn't working. So take me. Oh, so I don't know if this is a real song or if they just made it for the show, but they show everybody dancing at emo night. DJ James Kennedy and Allie walk up. Uh, Sheena is down like backstage with Ariana. She has good as gold on her butt. She's like, oh my God, I hope it stays on. Katie Maloney is there. Everybody's hugging and happy. Um, Brock, I'm Brock. I've got big thighs like Ryan Bailey. Um, but it's all. So DJ James Kennedy comes down and he's talking to Ariana. He's like, um, I just got back from Tom's house. And Ariana's like, you mean my house? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, Tom, you know, after not talking to me, he decides to text me out of the blue. Like he's like having a small gathering. Um, come over. So I just thought, what, like, fucking, like, manipulative move to invite me over to his fucking birthday, right? It was like playing chess. This motherfucker wants to play me. I'm showing up. I'm showing up. I am. And I love that this is DJ James Kennedy think he's playing chess. Like, he's, you know, he's barely playing the game of sorry. I mean, this is funny that, like, in Ariana's face is like, wait, he texted you, so you went? And he's like, no, it, it was chess. It was a chess move. He texted me, didn't think I did. So I did show up. I did, I did. And then Sheena is like, Sheena does a talking head. And this is just the crux of this friend group. She's like, it's interesting that James, who told people to go, you know, throw tomatoes at him on stage. And we flash back to the day Scandaball broke when DJ James Kennedy did a video, because remember Sandoval had to play with Tom Sandoval and the most extras in Anaheim that night. And DJ James Kennedy made a Instagram message. He's like, if you're planning on seeing Tom Sandoval and the most extras tonight, don't forget to bring the tomatoes and cabbage. Sheen is like, how is DJ James Kennedy the first person who's been unblocked and reached out to by Tom? The fact that I've reached out to Tom and I'm still blocked, maybe my friendship never meant anything to him. But also, I trashed him, and so maybe he feels his friendship never meant anything to me. I guess it kind of goes both ways in this group. Now, it's fun to watch Vanderpumpers loot, like learn things in real time. Like, Sheena, that is like the uh, that is like point A to point B of like, I can't, first off, how, Sheena, is it to like, I can't believe DJ James Kennedy got unblocked first when I actually reached out to him when his friend passed. So Sheena's already taking it personal, which is A, don't do that. And then it's, it's, I mean, but it's classic. And then, uh, then she realizes in real time, like, oh, I've said shitty things about Sandoval too. So maybe that's how this friend group works. By the way, that should be like the series finale. They should just stop it right there. Episode three, where Sheena realizes what this has been about this whole 10 years. Wait a sec. We all kind of just fuck each other over. Oh, I've got to go be with my kid. <laughs> Anyways, DJ James Kennedy at Emo Night is regaling the crowd. They're all leaned in with the story. And he's like, yeah, Tom says, are you sorry for betraying? Like, I'm like, oh, are you sorry for betraying me? 
And he was like, do you remember like 10 years ago what happened? And I was like, oh. And Ariana was like, oh my God. And she was like, what, Kristen? Literally. And then Ariana said, he becomes scary because he has no one around him that gives him honest feedback at this point anymore. We flash back to the party and Santa was like, um, he was very heated. And Kyle Chan's like, yeah, yeah. You can't come at somebody like that with what he did in the past. It's hypocritically. Go back to Ariana and goes, these are people who he pays. You go back to Tom's party. He's talking to Jason. He's like, he, you know, you can't, you lose your ability to come in and act like that. And Jason's like, he came in so hot, dude. He came in so hot. Will the check clear this week? Then we flash back to emo night and Ariana's like, yeah, those are the only people. Sorry, Lala is like, those are the only people that will be around someone like him at this point. Now, I would say clock Lala. I mean, we should pull a sound clip of Lala saying this because I believe later on in the season, Lala does make up with Tom and stands up for Tom. We saw her stand up for Tom at BravoCon podcast, blah, blah, blah. This is the crux with, with Lala too. This is where she shows her ass a little bit is that she, you know, will think logically and then kind of go against the grain and then go back to thinking logically. She, in every given season, she will have all of the opinions. She will have all the opinions for, against, and she will really believe wholeheartedly in all of them. And at this point, three episodes in, Lala, I, I am, I'm so curious, and, and I do feel this must be a launching point for the rest of the season of the, not redemption of Tom, but working Tom back into this gang, the gang, as they call it. Um, but Lala is kind of, ineffective up to this point because I really don't know. And I think she doesn't know. We had that first episode where she reached out to Rachel, which we haven't like, we haven't followed up on. Like, you know, nobody's asked, Hey, did Rachel text you back? Like, I don't know where that's going to go. We do talk about Rachel, but I'm curious if we're ever going to get follow up from the Lala of it all who reached out or if Lisa's like, did she ever text you back to your girl? Oh, Lala, you're so level headed. I love you. Oh, for the love of God and country in the show. So Lala's like, yeah, then we go back we go back to the party and Tom's like, he's like wiping his dick off with a towel, dude. He's like, and Billy Lee, Billy Lee, like I said, just doing too much. Gives one of the biggest reactions like, oh no, wiping his dick off. Which I don't like, uh, this is, must be in Tom's imagination because I don't believe that Tom Sandoval saw DJ James Kennedy wiping his dick off. There's a lot of, there's a lot of DJ James Kennedy dick talk uh, from the peen on the bushes to this, but Billy Lee and Billy Lee's friend, they're all just like, Oh my God. It's like that thing when, you know, you see actors or background a actors in a movie and they're like doing too much where it takes you out of the scene. You're like, yeah, we get it. You, you had a reaction. Love it. But anyways, they're like, Ooh, gross. Yeah, one of my fucking shirts after they just had sex. Now we go back to emo night and she's like, we got to get out there. We got to party. We got to we got to rock the masses right now. So they're like, give it up for Ariana, Sheena and Katie. Why didn't Lala come up with this? Anyways, Ariana's like, I'm really good at a playlist. I think I have a career in DJing, at least pressing play. <laughs> and then DJ James Kennedy's like, I would be caught dead pressing play on a pre-recorded playlist. No, I'm a real DJ on the ones and twos. Guys night. Um, I thought Ariana, like when she said I could have a second career as a DJ, they showed an inner clip, like a, a clip of the, the crowd. And then they came back to her and said, or pushing play. Like she was making fun of herself. But if she, they didn't leave that thing in there, like I'm so now protective of Ariana where I'm like, oh, the audience is going to like fucking make shit of that. Like they're going to say, oh, you're good at everything. And then I was like, oh, yeah, Ariana takes DJing and sketch comedy very, very seriously. So we see them behind the 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 DJ boards just dancing. Everybody's jumping up and down like Katie's like spraying the crowd with some kind of noxious gas. And DJ James Kennedy's like, look at Katie. Look at Katie having a good time. Yes. All right. And then Lala goes, I still don't even know what emo music is. Like, what band is emo? Like Nickelback? Oh, Lala. I'm sorry. It's not. I'm sorry. It's not Fofty. Anyways, I was like, my neck hurts going like this. Anyways, they finish and they have that shot of Ariana standing up on the stage that we saw in the trailer where Lala's like, 
oh, I've never seen somebody get cheated on and then become a god. And then we go back to Tom's house and Kyle Chan's like, how was your trip? It was amazing. It was great. And George is like, dude, I'm going to roll, man. I'm going to go to emo night. Uh, oh, are you kidding me? I'm just kidding. I'm really appreciating you come. Yeah, for sure, dude. You can tell, and Maya, the dog, we got a shot of Maya, and Maya just looks like, will you take me with you? Like, please, can I just please come with you, Schwartz? And Schwartz in a talking head goes, I love Sheena. Like, me and James, we're tighter than ever. Me and DJ James Kennedy, tighter than ever. Um, But it's like, we don't have the history that Tom and I have, you know? And then we flash back to the romanticisms of Tom and Tom, multiple scenes, where they declare their love for each other. I know he's a doucher and everyone hates him right now, but you don't come by friendships like that often in life. And I don't think I want to give up on that, you know? So Schwartz leaves. And also to Schwartz's point, yeah, like I think it's ridiculous to, for anybody to think that Schwartz would fully step away from Sandoval at all. It's not that. And also, like I always say, those guys have bodies to bury. Like those guys know where all the bodies are buried on each one of them. Sandoval knows everything that Schwartz did in his relationship with Katie. Jack knows Jax knows everything that Tom did. Schwartz knows everything that Tom did. Like, no, you think like this is like pushing boundaries in terms of how intense it's been. But they all have done potentially, potentially, allegedly done shit like this. Right. So like, no, are you kidding me? Like, sure. Like the only funny thing I think it would be is if this season <laughs> Sandoval gets a new best friend and Schwartz is like, I can't believe you cheated on me with like a new guy. What are you talking? Like if, if Sandoval was secretly hanging out with somebody that he was declaring his love for as a best friend, that in the shorts is like, oh, I can't believe it. They were right. It finally happened to me. Why didn't I see this? La La warned me. Anyways, back to emo night. Sheena's like, that mosh pit was dope. Yes. And then Sheena introduces her boys, the 27s, and they do the screamo version of good as gold. And I'm telling you, I will take no good as gold slander. I will not, I will not put up for that. I'm sorry. This is a bop. And I do like when Sheena screams, Sheena goes, I truly never wanted to be a pop star. I wanted to go more Gwen Stefani Fergie route, have all my guys in the band with me. And I'm actually living out my dreams right now. It's so fun. And I love that. I don't, but I do think it's funny of like, I never wanted to be a pop star. I wanted to be Gwen Stefani and Fergie, which you could argue um, they were pop stars. Like their solo careers were pop stars. I think you mean like No Doubt and Black Eyed Peas potentially. So we see her do a little bit about this. Like I said last year, really um, think Sheena can really scream. Let's have a good time. I wanted to see a shot of Brock dancing in his little, his little nut hugger shorts his, with his little thighs. I got to talk to Brock about where he gets those. Cause I think that might work with my thick thighs. Anyways, it's a great night at emo night. It was a huge success. I'm very proud of everybody, but actually Schwartz walks in right when everything is over and Schwartz is down there like five feet away from Ariana. He's like, Oh, Oh my God. Did I miss it? Are you serious? Oh, Oh man. I'm sorry. And Sheena goes, that's what you get when you choose Tam Sandoval over the group. You miss the fun. He's like, come on. I was just hanging out with Billy Lee and Kyle Chan. I thought it was plenty of fun. Maya was crying. It was no, it was like so much. What are you talking about? Then we cut back our final time to the party. Happy birthday, dear Tom. Happy birthday to you. And Billy Lee is bringing a cake over to Tom. And he takes off his hat and brushes back his head. In a talking day, he's like, I can't begin to express how truly grateful I am for all the people that have stuck around. And he blows out his candles. His wish is for Ariana to move out. These people have put up with so much hate because of the things that I did. Billy had transphobic remark, which is dumb as hell. Jason got threat. Just being my friend, it really means a lot to me. More than anything. And his voice is breaking and he, you know, in his little Ann Taylor ladies green blouse, he's like wiping away his tears. I, I will say like, this is how bad I dress that every time, like I know his outfits are ridiculous, but I'm like, yeah, he still knows how to walk, rock like a woman's blazer. You know what I'm saying? Like when I look like I have, I still have those fleeting thoughts of like, I wonder if I could ever pull off a woman's blazer. Anyways, Tom now uh, by the fridge is talking to Billy Lee. And he goes, um, it does hurt my feelings that Raquel didn't text me tonight. 
And Billy's like, no, I feel like she abandoned you. I, I've seen you suffer from the breakup with Ariana, but I've also seen you suffer with Raquel. We'll be at a comedy show together and you're like running together at, at the, you're like at her beck and call. You haven't talked to her or seen her? No, I just want to connect. Oh. And they're talking to Eddie, like, up until a few weeks ago, I was talking to Raquel like once every couple of days. And I thought, because it was like my birthday that she would like try to reach out to me in some way, but nothing. I considered her like probably my best friend. Obviously, I love her and I miss her. And Billy's like, it's all about her healing, but now it's your healing. Yeah. Now it's your focus on yourself. I'm not, not another fucking girl. Like that's the journey we're on right now, you know? And this enraged me. Like Billy Lee, you know better. Like, like, listen, Raquel, as much as we all go, like she went to a mental health facility from what we were told. She only had access to her phone once a day, potentially. And also the fact that Tom is still in a place where like, oh, I just thought she would reach out, dude. She's like my best friend. But next thing you know, she's not going to be stocking the pins and batteries. Oh, my luck with women. Oh, man. But Billy Lee's like, you know, she's selfish. She's on her journey. Now it's time for your journey. When has it not been Tom's journey? This whole thing has been because of Tom's quote unquote journey. This is what is infuriating about this is that actually somebody goes out to actually get help for themselves to actually go on a real journey, not some bullshit reality show journey. And it's like, oh, I just thought, man, I guess, I guess, uh, I don't know. I love her and I care about her. I just thought this was so ridiculous and kind of shows that pattern of thinking where Billy Lee, if, you know, was like a real hard, I mean, obviously a hardcore ride or die for Tom, but also could potentially be a voice of reason to be like, Tom, do you realize don't take that personally? She just went through the mill and is so fucked up in her head right now. And she's actually doing something about it. She's not here at a party with Kyle Chan and me like that. There is something in that. I don't want to say noble, but there is something of like, there is a self-preservation element that I think these people should be applauding instead of like, oh, can't believe she didn't break out of the mental health facility to give me a birthday wish. Oh my God. It's like, like what was like group meeting like that intense that she couldn't come wish me a happy birthday. Jeez Louise. Oh goodness. Uh, pivot here. Uh, this is horrifying news. I just got word. They had the, the big Kansas city, uh, chiefs parade in Kansas and, uh, police are confirming that at least eight to 10 people were shot at the Chiefs Super Bowl parade. And, uh, that included multiple children. Uh, it was a mass shooting event. So prayers go out to, uh, to everyone involved. Um, man, that is just, I've got to remember to not look at my phone during this, but maybe we should be looking at our phones and talking about this stuff. God, I know this is, don't roast me for bringing this up mid recap. Oh, it's horrible. Uh, prayers for everybody involved. Um, man, take care of everybody and love everybody. That's just really sad. Really sad. Okay, I just took a break, getting my head back into it. Okay, back to these, these horrible people in Vanderpump Rules. Uh, so we uh, we pack, pick back up after commercial, and they do that whole thing where they show us, like, you know, we're in Schwartz's apartment where he's brushing his teeth. I love that he's like, you know, it's important that the audience knows I do clean myself. I, I clean my toothies. Uh, and then we go to Lala's apartment. We go to DJ James Kennedy and Allie's house. And then we land at uh, Tom and Ariana's place. And we see Anne, the assistant. She is washing dishes, probably from Tom's big birthday party. And Katie Maloney comes in because they are getting like IV shots after their big emo night. Um, it is funny that. I love Ariana's just like laying there hugging her dog with her glasses on, obviously hung over. And Katie comes in and is like, is the coast clear? Clear. Last time I was here, there was two Toms. And we flash back to Tom and Tom speaking and Katie sneaking up the stairs, which is wild. Ariana's like, I came home to a clean, empty house. And Katie's like, it looks clean. And she's like, yeah, it looks that way because Anne's been cleaning. And Katie's like, Anne, do you get paid extra to clean up? the the mess like this and she's like i wish <laughs> no 
No, I don't. No, I don't. And the uh, the IV people come in and Maya, the dog, is like barking at the IV people. And she's like, I feel very protected, Maya. Thank you. Like, I, can we get can we get can Maya get trained to like bark at Billy Lee or something like that? Like, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm being rough on Billy Lee. But um, I do love that Anna's just there cleaning, just there cleaning. I mean, Anne also potentially knows where the bodies are buried. Anne knows Probably a little, I mean, she, I mean, like, I wonder how much Anne knew. And that's the thing when it like spirals out to other characters in the Vanderpump extended universe, you're like, when did they know it? Hey, when did they find out? When did they know it? What do they know that we don't know? I mean, poor Anne is going to be interrogated by some reporter at some point, which by the way, uh, Kate, Ar uh, uh, Kate Arthur, who was on the show a couple weeks ago in regards to Salt Lake City, she did an interview with Anne for a variety. Kate gets like the best scoops and stuff like that. So anyways, the IV people come in and they're just, I I've done this before. It's supposed to like give you fluids and stuff like that. When you're hungover, it kind of gives you a boost. It's fun. If you have the money, it it's, it's good to do. It's good to do, but I do see that they do a lot. They do these kind of things a lot in reality shows. It's either that it's like a couple of years ago when they did the, um, the, the rage rooms where everybody would go in and break stuff. It's like whatever is hot and new that becomes part of a storyline. Um, by the way, big news revealed in this uh, scene because we find out that Katie Maloney has a big juicy vein. <laughs> Katie Maloney's storyline thus far has been Katie discovers she has a big, juicy vein. Shout out to Katie's mom if you're listening. Hi, I love you. Katie's mom, by the way, uh, Terry Maloney, uh, she loves The Golden Bachelor and that they are now casting for The Golden Bachelorette. I think Katie Maloney would be a great Golden Bachelorette. So Katie Maloney, we should make a post for that to start a campaign to get Katie Maloney on the golden bachelorette, because then we could have the scene of, uh, Katie judging her mom's suitors. Like, could you imagine? Like I would be so scared of Katie judging me. And like, I, she, I would be so scared of that. I'm scared of that now, but imagine that like, she is like part of the deal for the golden bachelorette and you have to impress Katie to get to Terry Maloney. Whoo, scary stuff. Anyways, they're getting set up and, Katie says, I'm, I'm going to see Sheena late, later, and I'm pretty excited she's not drinking right now, so I don't have to drink, which that's what happens when you get older, folks. You you, you don't want to drink. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. Anyways, Katie lets us know she and Sheena are committed to working on their relationship. You know, I can communicate. The lights are on. Somebody's finally home with Sheena. And Ariana goes, I feel like she still has this soft spot for Schwartz, but I don't think he needs to be invited to things. And Katie's like, Sheena said, yeah, I'm going to have different approach in friendships. And it's kind of like, are you going to be like this person that sort of flip flops like you were and a little untrustworthy? And Ariana's like, well, I think people can get her to feel for them because there's people besides just Tom Schwartz that will use her for that sort of thing. And Katie's like, that's what makes me nervous to get close to her because it's going to bring energy that I don't want. And Ariana's like, yeah, okay, yeah. And then we, but by the way, what she said is actually very accurate. And I think Sheena can sometimes be misjudged a lot and kind of branded a flip flopper when Sheena seems to take everything at face value. And if somebody can pull Sheena aside, she usually seems to believe them. And it's kind of like, yeah, okay, let's hang out. Let's do this. Like, I don't think Sheena sometimes thinks through her decisions or what it's going to mean or how it's going to look. And she's like literally just looking at somebody and that's, and I think these people do know that about Sheena. So she is, I don't want to call it the weak link, but that's one of those things. Even Tom, Tom spends a lot of this episode bitching about Sheena, but at the very end, he's like, oh, it's Gino. What's up, dude? Yeah. Because I think, you know, that's an entrance point into this friend group. So, you know, people do kind of tend to use Sheena, but she is an easy target sometimes. So, then we uh, get a couple interspersed things and we head on over to Pump Restaurant. Remember, it closed last week's episode and we see uh, we see just an empty Pump Restaurant for chairs and the big tree, which, by the way, I saw this big tree and at first I thought it was Ken because it wasn't moving. I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like, oh, that's the tree. That's tree. And Lisa's in there by herself. She's like, oh, we had a good run. You know, 
Lisa with her big kerosene can trying to light the place on fire for insurance money. But she's standing around. <laughs> she's standing looking around, you know, what was once pump and now it's completely empty. It's so hard for me to look around at this empty shell of a restaurant like Tom Sandoval. I've known that we were going to close pump for quite a while now, but seeing everything loaded out makes it so much more real. And then we get the man of the hour. We get Ken Todd uh, answering the phone. He's like, hello. And she's like, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for it, Ken. He's like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? I keep thinking, did we do the right thing? And he's like, um, well, you can change your mind if you want. Change your mind? I'd only change my mind if they would revert back to the original rent. Look, nothing lasts forever. We've got to take a lot of this stuff out, and I don't know where we're going to put it. He's like, you can put it in the jacuzzi with Tom and Rico. Did you know that? You could probably fit all of this stuff. And then we see Tom Sandoval. He is walking with like a, a gigantic flower arrangement. I'm I'm so curious where he even got this from. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, I love it. It's like, so she's obviously doing a scene with Tom Sandoval. So she knows this in advance. So I would love if Ken was like, could you please ask Tom about the jacuzzi? Could, could you take, could you see if he liked my line in last season, please? And I wish Ken had actually been there for this scene to knock his spark clean out because he comes aggressive at Lisa. Like you are talking to Lisa. You get one of these women to talk to Lisa Vanderpump like this, it would not fly. But Tom Sandoval is like, dude, like he's so aggressive in this scene. And that's why you want Ken. Remember that one, that scene with DJ James Kennedy a couple, like, like five seasons ago when DJ James Kennedy was drunk and he's like, I'll knock, your, I'll knock your spot clean out. He like really got up in DJ James Kennedy's face. He's like, I'm sorry, Ken. I'm sorry. It was wild. So Sandoval comes walking around with these flowers, looking all kind of smug and like a little smirk on his face. He walks in, intense music. And he walks in and Lisa sees him. Oh, fucking, I've got to call you back. You. Oh, good to see you. Brought you some flowers. I know it's like bringing sand to the beach. Well, this ain't no beach, my dear boy. Thank you. Interesting. And he gives her a kiss on both cheeks. How are you, dear boy? I'm all right, dude. A little beat up physically from my time in New Zealand. Yeah. Have you seen anybody since you got back? I've seen Ariana. Oh, you have? Yeah, but I mean, we haven't talked. We just live in together. That ship has sailed. I have no idea why you two are in the same house. It's ridiculous. Why, well, I think it'd be the gentlemanly thing to do to move out there and give her space and sell the house. I mean, or one of us can keep it because it's a great house, dude. I put a lot of like work and money into it. I've already had my real estate agent talk to Ariana. I sent her a letter of intent over a month ago, dude. What, you know, I love Tom's. I would love to see Tom's version of a letter of intent. It's like, dear Ariana, I like house. Tom. <laughs> I like I had my real estate agent talk to her. I mean, there's like a lot of like, and by the way, I know this sounds silly, but I would actually enjoy seeing these scenes. I want to see Tom writing out a letter of intent. I want to see Tom's real estate agent talk to Ariana and how that went. And by the way, I'm picturing Tom's real estate agent is just his assistant Ann. Oh, uh, Ann, could you ask um Ariana to sell me this house, please? But Tom's like, it's been radio silence with her, dude. Uh, what is the way forward with this? I don't know. I just, well, you've got to. I, listen, Lisa, I'm trying to figure this out. This is a lot for me, okay? Well, you created, I created it, yeah. But it's still a lot, Lisa. And then he brings up his friend, Ali, passing. I have Sheena hitting me up, telling me if I need anything to please reach out to her. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay, well, let me. And meanwhile, the same day she's releasing things, starting rumors about me and Billy, and we cut to a shenanigans clip saying, I think something maybe did happen with him and Billy back in the day, and they just made a pact to not tell anyone. You know what, Gina? You know what I mean for you? Take a day off from fucking dragging my name through the dirt. Like, let's really just kick Tom when he's down. Let's kick Raquel while she's down. Let's just have this guy on my podcast talking about explicitly, like, sexual things. What do you mean? Uh, this guy, Nima, that Raquel dated for, like, a very brief time. Like, Sheena had him on her podcast talking about, like, what? Sexual things. And like, so fucked up, man. About a month ago, Sheena had this guy, 
Nima, he says in a talking ad, who recount data like for a short time last year on her podcast, he claimed that I had told Raquel that Ariana and I were in a roping relationship, which is, by the way, it's not true. But on top of that, he went on to say all these very explicit things, like that Raquel was begging for him to have sex with her on Sheena's bed. I felt so bad for her, dude. I was on the phone for quite a while. I was just so grossed out. I'm shocked he didn't bring up, it's like DJ James Kennedy when he was wiping off his dong with my t-shirt after he used my condom, dude. Okay. Now let's take this at face value and face value. Obviously this man is going through a lot of pain. His friend did die. He has had his whole world exploded, but he comes in hot. And the way he talks to Lisa is very interesting because that power dynamic that Lisa has set up is that usually she is Queen B, but he is not scared of Lisa in any way. And he talks to her like he's above her in certain ways. The other thing about this of like being so grossed out about sexually explicit things talked about in a podcast. First off, Tom has talked about sexually explicit things on his podcast, including Ariana not wanting to uh, sleep with him. I mean, said really uh, very private things about their relationship. And some of those turned out to, as we found out, to not be true because they did have sex when he was telling Rachel that they hadn't had sex in seven or eight months or something like that. The second thing is he's really walking a slippery slope, and I don't think the show will ever call him out on this, but he is the man that I need to remind everybody screen recorded Rachel doing the hippity dippity with herself. He screen recorded that recording that she said of her, you know, touching herself. Do you like how my voice broke? <laughs> touching herself. Um, so for him to say, like, I'm so grossed out, like, dude, you've done really bad things as well. Sexually explicit things as well. That became public knowledge that you're lucky that charges were not brought up on you because that actually is illegal to do what he did. But of course, when you're trying to blame, and I get it, it sucks that everybody has an opinion on you, that everybody is talking Tom Sandoval, everybody has stories to tell. And this is what happens when you all of a sudden become not a reliable narrator is that you're like, okay, well, why would this Nima guy lie? Why, why would he lie? He's, he's that desperate to do good on Sheena's shenanigans podcast, which by the way, this shenanigans podcast, my God, like we're probably having a really banner year because now everybody's going to go back and listen to this Nima episode potentially. But I mean, this is just free advertising for her podcast. God, like, listen, I've screamed about Tom too. Vanderpump, please put some, can you put something in of me talking about Tom using the line of, he, he, he wiped off his dong with my t-shirt, dude. Come on, please use that clip. So he's saying this and he's like, I felt so bad for Raquel. Like, but once again, aren't you perpetuating this by even bringing it up on camera? You're re making this like even worse because you're bringing this up on camera and Rachel's not even there and talking about like, oh, I had to talk to her for hours, dude. You know, like he's the good guy all of the sudden. So Lisa's like, or he's like, this mob mentality, I was always so against it. I know, so why don't you point that out to them? Why don't you say, I'm truly sorry? May I even handle it the best way I should? Because they'll be like, oh, you didn't mean it. That's what they always say. Damned if I do and damned if I don't. I just want to move on. I just want to sing rock. But do you want to move on with all, all these people? I just want to, I, I don't want to, uh. he's like, okay, let's break it down. Stop being so angry because you're attacking me. I'm not attacking you. This is my life, as Billy Joel would say. I'm not living my rock star dreams, dude. I'm fucking literally grueling. It's fucking grueling work, dude. Have some remorse, dear boy. I am. Uh, I am like fucking say I'm sorry, cry. Oh, crocodile tears. Oh, uh, and then this is where it gets serious. He says he battled with suicide. And Lisa's like, no, no. Don't tell me what I felt. In a talking head, he says, I was hanging on by a thread. Your walls start closing in. You can't see outside of like hurt, the hurt and the pain. You can't dream about better days. And I was getting to the point where I felt like, what's the fucking point? And Lisa goes, I reached out to you and you know how I feel about that because Lisa's brother was lost to suicide. And he's like, okay, but don't tell me how I fucking felt. I understand that you might've felt like that. And you promised me. So at the reunion, you promised me, I guess Lisa reached out to him 
in a talking head. She says, Tom Sandoval assured me after the reunion, when I called him from the car on the way home and here Bentley, I said, if you promise me, Tom, if you ever have any sort of thoughts like that, he's like, I'm not that person. I wouldn't do that. So to hear him say he's had those thoughts and he didn't call me, that scares the fucking living day- daylights out of me. And, you know, they show a shot of her and her brother and she said, I can't hear that and do nothing about it, which nor you're a producer on the show. You shouldn't. She said, I'm trying to help you move forward. Can you find your way back to a friendship with Sheena? He's like, I don't know. With anybody? He's like, I don't know, Lisa. The only way you can repair it, she says, is with utter sensitivity and contrition. Do you understand that? And Tom's like, oh, uh, what? And she's like, just say yes, you understand that. He's like, I understand it. I understand it. And that's a really intense scene. That's a really intense scene on so many levels. But what he said, you know, the what you see in this scene and what I talked about earlier is like Tom has this gigantic ego that, you know, we're being made more and more aware of. And that's where this anger comes from because, you know, now Schwartz and Lisa, Schwartz earlier and Lisa going, hey, just say you're sorry. Just contrition. That's all you need to be doing. Just say, Yes, I'm sorry. Just agree. Just can be contrite, be this. And you see Tom's ego fighting against that. That anger is coming out. So, so there's no doubt this man is in pain, but that pain turns into anger because of that ego of his. And it is horrifying. And, and what he says about suicide is so dead on. It's like, you can't see your way to better days and the walls start closing in. And I, uh, I can, that's the part I can completely relate to that. I can completely relate to that. And I think if we were being honest with ourselves, a lot of us, uh, maybe there has been a point in their lives that they have felt similar. And that's, you know, one of the big things that they'll tell you in suicide prevention is the, you know, just being able to hold on is that, you know, you can get stuck in these moments, these little moments that can alter the course of your life and others because you can't see the way out of that. And that's where, you know, it, 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 it ceases to be entertaining or funny or, or anything like that, because you have to take this at face value. And I've seen some people post of like, oh, croc, you know, like the, the, what do you, you know, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't believe anything this man says. And yeah, about certain details. Yes. But I, you know, if he says this, you don't throw that around. Like I'm going to believe that. And that's the thing where I'm like, I, I really wish this man would himself get intensive therapy. And, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't like, but Tom, like it's, you got to figure yourself out. And then however anybody else wants to react to you, it's not your issue. It might hurt because you want to be liked, but it's not your issue. How other people then feel about you if you are then doing the work on yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean that I, 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 God, I've been there. I've, I know exactly that feeling. It is so scary, right? It's so scary because it really doesn't feel like there's any other options. And it all of a sudden starts going from this kind of like, oh, uh, oh, never to, well, I just, it's, there's so much pain and I've caused so much pain and all that, you know, like it leads to a certain way of thinking that it then becomes like, well, that's an option. And that's so, so scary. And I'm so glad at the end of this episode, they did put up a suicide prevention hotline and, uh, you know, and I don't think there should be any shame in, in being realistic about this because, you know, there's so many stories, even uh, going to real housewives of Beverly Hills with Kyle's friend, Lorene this season is that, you know, it was a shock to so many people in her life. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, probably Lorene was scared to talk about this and talk about her feelings and, and, and maybe not even being able to understand why she was having the feelings she was having. Like sometimes, you know, it's like, I've talked about this is, uh, you know, your brain just won't participate is that you're, you're, you're like, I just feel dead. I just, there's just a deadening of feeling and things can happen and one after the other, and it can be a lot, it can be a lot on the psyche. And so my heart does go out to him in this. I just, sometimes then it leads me to think this is not the place for him right now. And I know the show must go on, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, when you bring up the S word, I just think, geez, you know, and I know, you know, this is supposed to be fun and jokey, but these moments you, you can't be fun and jokey with. Um, it, it just becomes really, really, really sad. 
Um, so anyways, and, I, and I'm curious to see what changed because the heat of that was at that reunion time, you know, that was like the worst of it. And he was assuring Lisa. So I'm wondering also what were those things that happened afterwards? Um, obviously the Howie Mandel podcast. Um, I think it was that, 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 that thing that like him trying to stay in the press, trying to face this head on or trying to talk to TMZ cameras and stuff. None of that helped any of this. Like it was just the, and I, I hate to use Carl Radke as an example because we'll see where he's at on this upcoming season. But, you know, he made this huge life choice uh, in regards to Lindsay, but then he disappeared. And I would imagine he was kind of working on himself and giving him giving himself the time to think and not constantly poking the bear because in our real lives, we don't have to do deal with reality cameras. So we can deal with our issues a little bit better, not better, but like in a different way. But when you are out there almost seeking out the cameras, I feel like you are slowing down any sort of healing process that you possibly could have in this situation. So anyways, very powerful. But I felt like we were about to have like a goodwill hunting scene with Lisa and Tom. I was like, it's not your fault. Oh, I know it's not my fault. It's not your fault, dear boy. I know it's not. And then like, oh, I thought it was going to be like a big Matt Damon crying onto Robin Williams shoulder at some point. And I almost thought like Lisa was kind of like trying to get there and she couldn't. Um, but it was really intense once he brought that up. And I I just, it just scares me because I still don't think he's probably getting the help that he needs. And I know he's filling that hole. We see he's in that new relationship. He's going to Vegas. He's doing this. He's doing the band. And I just hope that there is some real strong motivation. And I, I don't think any of us talking about him has been any kind of motivation for him. In fact, I think it's just potentially made him angrier and more solidified in, you know, how his ego wants him. Okay, so we cut from that to uh, Lala and Ariana shopping, where uh, Lala is admitting to loving micro things. Uh, shout out to Randall. Uh, <laughs> and anyways, they, they get into a conversation about DJ James Kennedy not drinking anymore. And Ariana's like, yeah, I've always thought he'd been better when he hasn't been drinking, but I don't want to tell him anything, you know, about not drinking, you know, as somebody who drinks. And Lala's like, yeah. You know, as, as you know, nobody that drinks should be telling somebody about not drinking. Uh, but Lala says, I feel like even myself, I can't go up to him and say, would you like to go to a meeting with me? It's just like they have to come to us if they want what we have. And I'm talking that she's like, here's the thing. I think being sober is beneficial to everybody. Your skin looks fantastic. Your lips get really plump. And she says, you lean out. And the best part is. You don't engage with people you don't normally engage with. The amount of people I gave my phone number with when I was fucked up is insanity. And little Lala's like, fuck yeah, those are the good old days. Woo, get a new number out. Uh, thank you, little Lala. Um, yeah, Lala, you know, making a smart decision for herself. But it's once again of like, it is just funny. Now there is a very sober contingent in Vanderpump Rules you know, instead of the pain that came from the drinking and the fights, it's just the pain that's literally coming from poor life decisions that is not involving alcohol at this point. Um, but it, it also makes me question of like, Lala, what are you what are you doing here? Like, what, what are you literally doing here? Like, where are the relationships coming into play? Because they're trying to do this Ariana Lala scene thing the last couple of episodes. But we do know it's going to take a shift. And I just wonder how Lala is going to insert herself into the storyline. And that's why I thought she had made uh, a smart move for herself in that first episode with texting Rachel, but Rachel didn't take the bait. So they're talking about going to see you next Tuesday. And they're talking about what they would dress each dress, dress, dress in to go to see you next Tuesday. I would just wear old Navy clothes as usual. And then we go on over. Uh, it's night. It's dusk in West Hollywood. And we pop up on this restaurant where Katie is meeting Shishu. She is meeting Sheena. And let's see how this goes because neither of them are drinking. We've already seen that Sheena has posted a selfie outside of the restaurant while waiting for Katie Maloney. And they're like, Oh my God, this restaurant's so cute. Sheena's like, Katie and I used to be so close. And we get a flashback to all of these really nice moments with Sheena and Katie 
they could have equally just posted all the bad moments because there's equally the same amount. But you have to remember there have they have been in each other's lives so long. And that's why these characters are so essential to Vanderpump rules. Um, Sheena goes, I think we both genuinely want to make it work this time around. So spending more time one on one is first thing on the list. So they're ordering food. So in this conversation, we find out that Kevin is going to, uh, sorry, that uh, Katie is going to go on a date with Kevin, who is the guitarist for Sheena's band, the 27s, the next night. And Katie relays that they started talking and got into a conversation about tequila, which then obviously we get a montage of tequila, Katie, of like, my boyfriend is talking to that whore over there. Tequila Katie was wild, but Katie, obviously growing up, will we see Tequila Katie make an appearance this season? I mean, she was pressed to her limits last season because of the whole Rachel uh, Schwartz storyline that turned out to be fake. Um, But she still kept her cool under intense pressure. Uh, But anyway, she says she got to shine in that moment. I am curious because we do know that there is potentially the storyline with Schwartz, Katie going after the same girl. Uh, which is Sheena's nanny uh, for for Summer Moon. And uh, that should be interesting. But I got to tell you, at the end of the day, I'm really curious where Katie and Schwartz are. Like we see these kind of dog drop off scenes and, you know, where Katie's like, yeah, well, uh, good luck with everything. You're living your life. Peace. But I, I'm still so curious. And it's so real, like more about their relationship. And I really want to know how Katie got the strength to move on um, I would like to delve a little bit more into that. I want to know, you know, how she felt about certain scenes from last season when Schwartz is like, I don't want anything to do with her. Oh, she's fucking gross. Like, I want to know things like that. And that's the hard thing is as these groups, this, this, this gang, as they call it, you know, it's becoming more and more evident, like all of these actual real friends outside this gang, they're going on their lives, but they're still forced to be together. And you do have to wonder of like, how does everybody stay into it? Like, I mean, the Schwartz, Katie, they were, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, then they were married, then they were divorced. So you have this really intense relationship. Sheena's always been there. Tom and Ariana, obviously DJ James Kennedy now has brought Allie in, but DJ James Kennedy used to be with Rachel. Rachel's not going to be on this season. But like I said, you just start to essentially think about storylines. How do we keep this going? And is the audience going to find it false in any way when we try to push outside of this gang and bring new people in like this storyline? I'm really curious about with Schwartz and Katie about fighting over this nanny. You know, if that truly is a storyline, I listen, I'm just waiting for Schwartz to dye his hair blonde. That's the episode that I am really looking forward. So her and Sheena are, are having this bonding conversation completely sober with their mocktails. And Sheena's doing her thing. She's like, I need to find if these guys are single in my band because I'm looking out for you. Yeah. And Sheena's like, speaking of, I I do want to apologize, Katie, for even inviting Schwartz. That was like the old Sheena feeling bad that someone's left out. But then when he was like, oh, I don't want to abandon Sandoval. And I was like, immediately, I'm regretting this. I'm so happy with where you and I are at. I don't want to have you ever be uncomfortable because of him like being there. And Katie's like, I appreciate that. It's not about me. I'm thinking like more of like for your own, you know, kind of like, you know, for your own safety, don't hang out with Schwartz. She's kind of saying, um, I am curious when Sheena's going to blow this though, <laughs> but Sheena goes, it's been four months of a lot of self-realization and understanding boundaries that need to be in place. And the people who are in my life are the people I want in my life. And Katie's like, to have people carve out time for garbage people just because I have a history with, if you don't have value and you are not somebody who, and I like that Katie's like, if you don't add value, then you wouldn't be hanging out with anybody in this cast potentially. And I like that all the girls, do you notice that all the girls are actually doing work on self-realization and like painful habits and patterns of their emotional makeup? And the guys are like, why won't everybody forgive me? It's it's interesting. The girls are doing the heavy lifting. Once again, we cut to Tom Schwartz with uh, his dogs going into Vanderpump dogs. Oh, and Lisa's with summer, the director of marketing at Vanderpump dogs and Schwartz walks in with these dogs. Remember he told Katie last week that he got the, uh, the poo dingles off their butts and gave them like a nice bath. So they're going to groom Gordo and butters. 
He's like, they're shaggy boys. These dogs are shaggy boys. I love you better than so much. So Lisa's like, are you going to stay? Are you going to go? He's like, well, I'm going to chat with you. Check in. Use a little therapy session, I think. And then he tells us he got really bad news about his brother this morning. He's like, oh, God, no, what? And one of the brothers is back in rehab, but he had to be rushed back to the hospital yesterday. But he might have cirrhosis. And that's like insanely serious. And Lisa's like, did he drink that much? And Tris is like, I guess so. It's the third time he's been there. And at Tug and Eddie says, Bert used to be this ray of sunshine. And we see pictures of them. And there was this moment where he got jumped outside of a bar and he was just kind of never the same. And he slowly started developing a dependency on alcohol. Any form of addiction and the impact it has on the whole family is brutal, you know? Seeing someone I love suffer so much, he says, because of their dependency on alcohol, it made me rethink, you know, my moderation. Ugh. I mean, that that's tough. I mean, this guy works in the bar industry. I mean, what, you know, remember when Schwartz took it down to like, I'm only doing, I'm only doing half shots. I wonder if he's going to bring it down to quarter shots, but that's got to be intense. And we all kind of potentially have somebody in our family or friend group have like a really insane dependency on alcohol and how it really does affect that family. So this is like a very, another real issue amongst all this other crazy bullshit that Schwartz is actually dealing with. And I know it's probably very sensitive and it's, you know, not Schwartz's story to fully tell, but it is one of those things of like, man, that is, that is another really serious thing that I think would give, I mean, it's just, that's another, just, it's so, I'm telling you, this show is a horror show. It's a horror show, which by the way, we didn't see the opening titles this week, but I, you know, like how they have the drone coming into like something about her and then sir and then tom tom i feel like each one of those like the character should be trying to escape and <laughs> they're like get us out of here i mean this is really dark stuff but that's what happens as you get older right like more and more of life happens to you and your family and your friends and so this show what it used to be about 20s uh good looking 20 you know 20 somethings you know sleeping with each other in a bar it's now been on so long that these are turning into middle-aged people that are dealing with, I, I swear to God, there's going to be a storyline about the IRS and taxes next season at some point. But this is really scary because they are trying to keep this Scandal storyline going when it's like, holy shit, we're talking about suicide. We're talking about drinking. I mean, this is just, this is real. And sometimes these shows, and I'm not saying Vanderpump rules, but sometimes these shows, they don't handle it in a delicate fashion at all. And it can sometimes really affect the tone of the overall show. But I love Lisa being a pure businesswoman, you know, like because she realizes that the whole show and their whole livelihoods depend on the bar industry. She's like, well, what's that? Anyways, what, what's happening with Schwartz and Sandy's? He's like, oh, I never saw this one coming. Um, This is like a uh, unforeseen act of whatever you want to call it. Are you talking about the backlash of Sandoval? Yeah. Uh, I just don't think. The punishment really befits the crime. And maybe I would feel differently if Ariana wasn't living her best life, you know, but she's kind of moved on. That's the thing. It was like months ago. We're like still reeling from it. Maybe everybody will always feel differently about Sandoval. But the thing that really worries me, and this is a personal trigger for me, and she brings up him being so low that he actually said he had some really dark thoughts. And Schwartz is like, to think I'm one of his best friends in the world. And he didn't tell me that until after I found out through other people in his life. And Lisa says, when I hear that, it scares the hell out of her, obviously because of her brother. And she says, and then suddenly sometimes it's too late. And that is exactly, yeah, that's my feeling on that exactly. But to also go back to what Lisa was saying in regards to, you know, I wouldn't have, uh, you know, I maybe would feel differently if Ariana wasn't living her best life. So basically, this is very interesting is that we need the woman to feel completely low, be crying all the time for Lisa to feel sympathy for her. Now, if somebody is trying to be strong through this thing, take the opportunities they are given, then we should not feel as bad. And that's what I think is so, like I said at the very beginning, is everybody's crying except Ariana. Like Ariana, and like it, it's not to say she doesn't cry, it's just not going to be on camera. She's going to be strong. And I feel like that's something that would be or should be looked up to in a way, yet that counts against her.
If she is not playing the perfect victim, if she was playing the perfect victim, then we would be able, Lisa would be able to feel bad for her. But it just goes to show you, and Lisa has always been this for the 11 seasons of this show, from Jax to Schwartz to Sandoval, she will much, it will be much more to the defense of the men. And you have to wonder about her relationship with Ken, her relationship with other people in her personal life. Obviously, she has gone through this many times. I don't think cheating is any kind of big thing to Lisa, potentially. And I do feel like it's a boys club and she feels like she's one of the boys. And I find that really and I would be so curious for the women of Vanderpump Rules to be able to talk honestly about their feelings when it comes to Lisa and the men on Vanderpump Rules, because then you, you tell it to, you know, goofy Schwartz and Schwartz is like, oh, that's a great point, Lisa. Um, and then that kind of feeds into Schwartz eventually saying like, oh, you're so holier than thou are, Elena. Oh, because it feeds into that mentality of like, oh, well, if Lisa said it, I can even double down on these feelings about Ariana. And then you can see kind of the delicate balance the game of cat and mouse and getting people on each other's sides. But, you know, we used to all do that to it, like in our teens and our twenties, you know, when you'd have a breakup and you'd see which friends landed there. But you, like I'm saying, these people are nearing 40, you know, it should be a little different and it's just not because reality shows are involved. So also, you know, Lisa says, you know, just as a friend, I think you need to change this whole narrative for Tom. So, you know, having other people like Tom help with the friend group, which I think that's what we're going to see is Lisa pulling aside cast members and going, you know, Tom's at a very low spot. You should be nice to him. So it's very interesting. Tom is, you know, or, or Lisa is kind of almost being the mother of Tom here and standing up for her dear boy. Schwartz just looks exhausted in this scene. I also think there is something innately silly about having such a serious conversation in Vanderpump Dogs. I mean, you, there's little little poopies on the floor. <laughs> like, this is a very intense conversation. Could we maybe not have this in the showroom of Vanderpump Dogs? Anyway, so Lisa thinks this is the way to change the narrative for Sandoval. And she's like, why don't you try and get them all together? I'm going to Tahoe next weekend. I can hook you up. And then Lisa goes, we're very excited. We're opening a new restaurant in Lake Tahoe, just on the division between California and Nevada. Wolf by Vanderpump is going to be right there. It's going to be the sexiest restaurant in Lake Tahoe. I'm so fucking excited about it. Nicolaine did the decorations. So I love that Lisa's like, I can get you a discount, dear boy. I can hook you up. 15% off friends and family. I love that she's like, once again, this is how ridiculous the show gets. And this is what I love the show. We're having this intense conversation about suicidal idolation. And then obviously it's like, I'm opening the sexiest, right? You do. This is the place to take your mistress. Oh, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that right now. We've had bad things. Maybe the, the place you take the person you love right now. You know, sexy. We're talking sexy, my dear boy. What if you could get the whole gang? <laughs> this is... It's like each time they now this cast has to do a trip. It's like it's like SEAL Team Six. It's like some of us might not make it out alive. Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I mean, just imagine how exhausted these people are of each other. But Lisa's like, yes, you know, you can go and it'll help you get back in your groove. How many seasons are we going to help Schwartz find his Schwartz? Like, come on. If he hasn't found it by now, he'll just let us know when he finds it. But I think. I think going to the sexiest restaurant called Wolf in L Wolf Wolf in Lake Tahoe. I think Wolf is a place where groups can be mended, my dear boy. Oh, nigga Lane. Oh, we had so much fun decorating this. And I was like, oh, this would be a perfect area where everybody could forgive Tom Sandoval and also have pasta that will make them shit their drawers for weeks. Oh, it's the sexiest. Also, we've taken all the furniture from Pump and we're shipping it directly to Wolf. Literally, there's going to be ass stains from the pump chairs in Wolf by Lisa Vanderpump. <laughs> so Lisa never turning down an advertisement for any of her businesses. He's like, yeah, deep down, I do. I want to get the gang back together. Like, you know, probably Ariana Tom. No, he's like, yes, never. He's like, never. No, should it? If he'd done that to me, I'd cut King's what's-his-name and shove it up his ass. You know what I'm saying? 
So Lisa, if you felt that way about Ken, that you would cut off his wee wee and shove it up his butt. Why? I mean, I just saw no, blind leading the blind. Anyways, we're outside, sir. We're finally at sir, the Mecca, the sexy, unique restaurant where we see a neon sign that says love is love. DJ James Kennedy and Allie walk in. Lala and Logan walk in and, you know, DJ James Kennedy's like, see you next Tuesday. We hear screaming. Brock and Sheena are coming in. Schwartz comes in, gives a high five to the bouncer. And Brock's like, ah, look what the cut dragged in. It's Thomas Schwartz. All right. Schwartz is hugging everybody. He's like, I did iron my shirt, Brock. Why are you making fun of my shirt? And Lala goes, are you just popping in or were you invited? He's like, oh, I just kind of popped in. And then Brock's like, he pops in frequently. It's his new MO. And Schwartz is like, Lala kind of jabs that needle, you know, but it's strange. He's making me feel more welcomed. I, she acknowledged my existence. Like, I'll take the hate over the indifference any day. No, no, listen, because I flaked on like the past four. See you next Tuesdays. And I'm like, I'm coming to this one. And Lala goes, that's sweet. And then Schwartz brought gifts. He's like, I've been sober curious lately. And these are like neurotropics. You can look at it. There's no alcohol or anything like matcha, all kind of, you know, and Lala goes, what is sober curious? Um, it means like I'm dabbling in sobriety. And Lala goes, I think I've heard it all at this point. California sober. Now people are sober curious. I don't recognize either of those things, but do you boo? I love, I love if Schwartz ended that of like, all you have to do is use product code Schwartz 69 at checkout. <laughs> Do you know how potentially offensive it is to tell an alcoholic in recovery that he's sober curious? And I know Shorts' his heart's in the right place, but it's just like, I'm dabbling. I wonder if Shorts was sober that night. I bet he was not dabbling in sobriety the night of See You Next Tuesday. And then I also like Shorts' is like, I skipped out on the last four See You Next Tuesdays, but now cameras are here. So like, I've got to go. <laughs> it is kind of funny for Schwartz. That he has to like he has to throw himself in these group situations and just see if anybody will even talk to him. Um, and I, I don't know, it's funny. But so Katie and Ariana aren't even there yet. Allie says she's sober curious right now as well. And Sheena goes, I'm sober. You didn't bring me anything. Sheena <laughs> immediately going, Why didn't you bring me a gift? Wow. Okay, you forgot about me again. Okay, great. And he's like, oh, fuck. And then Schwartz says a Schwartz thing. He's like, I like your glasses. They look like Britney, like early 2000s. I love them. Schwartz immediately gives the compliment, which Sheena loves. Now we see Kata and Ariana come in and we see flash bulbs because now paparazzi co show up to every filming event this past season. And they like sneak in. They sit with the group. Uh, everybody's doing the hug. You look great. They're wearing very tight dresses. Everybody there. Um, and Schwartz is like, hey, you got you want to sit down? I'm going to go mingle. Katie, are you good on seats? And Katie, nobody talks to him. He's like, OK. And then Jesse, the waiter, comes out and she's like, mocktails, mocktails, mocktails. Guys, see you next Tuesday is it just it's it. he's blowing the roof off the joint. A lot of high fives. And Schwartz goes up to the booth and he's like, I'm here. I know you're vibing. But, dude, I had a really good conversation with Lisa. Do you know about that new spot in Tahoe? Wolf? Wolf. He's like, yes, I do know about Wolf. We were riffing and I kind of invited myself and like half it jokingly. And she's like, yes, come invite everyone. And like, you don't have to stay there if you don't want to. I'm going to extend the invitation to everybody. He's like, you mean Sandoval. I mean, to everyone in our group. So everyone here is cool. I mean, you know, I haven't even talked to Tom. Because it'd be nice if he didn't come, you know. I don't want to spend my days, like, feeling this anger over the ultimate betrayal. I can't let this stuff annoy me, you know. I've got to let it go. I've got to let it go. And Schwartz goes, beautifully stated, man. Beautifully stated. Schwartz is so good at pumping everybody's ego. Like, he he's so good. Like, if, if somebody's upset at him, oh, those are beautiful glasses. If he's uh, getting a little pushback about Sandal going to Wolf, you know, he's like, oh, that's an amazing comment you just made, James. Like, it's just, it's just so, it's that ego. Like, okay, like, that's how everybody loves Schwartz. He just has a positive thing to say about everybody. Now, the question is, is it genuine or not? Or does he know what he's doing? So then we cut to Kyle Chan, designer to the stars, jewelry designer to the stars, and Tom walking. I, I would love, I would, I need the, um, I do need the Kyle Chan story. 
Like I need some kind of documentary <laughs> how Kyle Chan inserted himself into the friend group because he's given this entire group like discounts on like engagement rings, jewelry. They all speak so highly of him. Like I need to know what was first contact. Like was Kyle a fan of the show? Were they fans of Kyle? I, I do get more curious about Kyle Chan's origin story. So anyways, Kyle is walking into the lion's den with Tom. Tom is wearing like a skater boy sweater, which is also Y2K. We find out at the end. So Tom's walking with his head up. He's like, yeah, let's do this, dude. And the music is like, dunk, 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 dunk. Tom's like, good to see you, Bouncer. Good to see you. Okay. Okay. And he sees the group sitting and they seat Tom to another room. He's like, I feel like I'm walking into the lion's den here, dude. But like, I'm taking what Lisa said to heart. I'm ready to be apologetic and a humble. Or did she, see, did she say apoplectic? Anyways, here we are, Thur. Should be interesting. Let's rock and roll. And so we see the group enjoying their food. And she is like, oh, Sandoval just walked in. Yeah, he just walked in with Kyle. He's right there with Kyle Chan. And Ariana's like, oh, God. And this is where it must be just a pain in the ass to film these shows. Because no matter what, you're going to have to face these uncomfortable situations. And I just love that Sandoval is the, I love, they just have him in this. This is like an escape room, an escape room that nobody can truly escape from. And then Ariana goes, he'll probably just walk right up and go, what's up guys. Great Tom impersonation, Ariana. But Ariana lets us know, I will not have him in our circle. Peace out, dude. You suck. And a talking head. So Katie goes, so after his exchange with James, he said, I should go to see you next Tuesday. So Katie brings up a po uh, an amazing point. And this is why it's, you know, it's like after that conversation at the birthday where James and, you know, Sandoval had a contentious conversation. Sandoval still said, oh, I should go support the guy at see you next Tuesday. But I mean, I think the obvious answer on all of these questions that any of the cast have of like, because you are filming. Because you are filming and Lisa wants you to film. Anyways, they see Tom and Kyle at this two top in a different room. And it's, I think they made, I think they even brought like a tinier table, like just for this scene. They had one made because it's very tiny. And you see all of the people partying in the background. And Tom's like, oh, busy night, dude. Okay, it's busy. All right. Um, it's packed. You can tell he's like, it's because of me, dude. So it's my first time having dinner in a really long time. And you know, talking head, he goes, being here at Thur, I feel like somebody's going to accidentally spill a drink with me on purpose, on me, on purpose. And Kyle's like, have you talked to any of them? I mean, obviously I talked to James at my birthday, but that didn't go so well. And Kyle goes, well, Sheena has been asked of you a very few times, you know, because of your best friend passing. And he's like, yeah, but it was bad timing, all the podcasts and stuff. And Kyle's like, I know, I understand. And he said, at that point, I really had enough. And Kyle's like, okay, yeah. And then Jesse Montana, their waiter comes out. He's like, what's up, dude? And Jesse goes, obviously, I've been wondering how you're doing. I've been worried for you. Like you fucked up, obviously. I know there's definitely been like a lot of collateral damage, um, especially Schwartz. Yeah, but definitely I know you gotten some too. And he goes, it's been the actual worst. Uh, I'm sorry, man. You know, like I told you when all this went down, I had to unfollow you on Instagram. I didn't want to be attached to like your decisions. And the choices that you were made, you made. And he goes, yeah, yeah. I just don't want you to have to deal with any extra stress because of me. Thank you. I honestly like that means so much to me, Tom. And then they hug. He's like, I love you, man. And pulls him in for a bear. I love you, man. And then Jesse hugs Kyle as well. Jesse Montana on his road to recovery, you guys. So that's great. He had a, a really serious a, a, a brain injury that uh, he is recovering from, but it was so good to see him in this because he's been around this show from like kind of almost the beginning as well. So it's great to see him. I, I felt so bad for Jesse having to do this scene of going in to do the scene with Sandoval and having to be like, dude, I told you, I, like he, he did a really good job in this scene, but also there was a part of me that thought Tom didn't even listen. He's like, uh, yeah, Tom, I told you I didn't want to be a part of the decisions you were making. And Tom was like, yeah, anyway, dude, so good to see you. <laughs> so good to see you. Bring it in, dude. Brothers. Hey, brother, don't shake hands. Brothers, hug, dude. So everybody's high-fiving each other. Bros, you know, bro it out. Tom's playing with his hair. And Kyle's like, so you have to deal with that all the time, every single person you see? And Tom exhales deeply. And he starts crying. I just feel really bad, man. 
Like people have to go through that shit, man. They didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. Schwartz didn't do anything, man. And we cut back out to the other group and Schwartz comes back out. Hey, can I squeeze in with you guys? Hi. I was just talking to James inside. So I just had this great conversation with Lisa today. And DJ Kimney goes, oh, Schwartz got something to say. Yeah, I was talking to Lisa at Vanderpump Dogs. She mentioned she was going up to Tahoe last week for Wolf. And I invited myself jokingly. And she said, yes, come invite everyone. And Katie's like, are you inviting us? I am going to invite everyone, including you know who. And Ariana gives a look. And Katie's like, why? Because I want to invite everyone. And Ariana goes, I don't want to be, I don't want to be anywhere near you or my ex. And then Shorts goes, I just figured you're in the same house. It wouldn't be that awkward. And Ariana's like, when we're in the same house, there is a mediator that goes between and we do not run into each other or interact. I know it's a complicated situation. <laughs> Imagine, I know it's a complicated situation. Now, obviously, I hope Anne has to go on this trip too and be the mediator in Tahoe. <laughs> Actually, I don't think Ariana goes on this trip, but I would love if Anne like, has to go to Wolf and run interference. But I love George going, yeah, it's been a real sticky situation. You think? Yeah, it's been real. Yeah, no, I know. It's been weird. What happened with you guys? <laughs> It's great to see everybody's reactions in this scene to this. But Schwartz is like, let's have fun. We're in our 40s. Schwartz is like, you, you, you know, you don't have to see me or Tom. And Lala goes, after everything that happened and how he has treated you, uh, what makes you feel the need to like stand by his side? And L little Lala's like, yeah, motherfucker. Schwartz goes, we have a very beautiful friendship. And right now it's strained. It sucks for me. I think it's beautiful because you're a part of it, Lala says. But on his end, whether you want to stay this or not, and Schwartzy, the day will come when you will see it. And you're going to look back and go, I fucking should have gotten rid of him when that shit happened. And Ariana just looking. And Lala goes, he will devastate you. But we've been working through it. He hits me because he loves me. It's a work in progress. No, I mean, it's sad, really. But the, the the weirder thing here, and this is another thing that I feel like we should pull as a sound clip of Lala saying this, because I feel like Lala is one of those people that folds this season back off of these comments. And so Lala will always make a really clear, strong statement that makes a lot of sense, even though I think it's like on deaf ears, those two will never get away from each other, nor do I even think that they really should because they kind of deserve each other. Um, and I don't even necessarily mean that bad, but... I just think it's 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 interesting. It's it's like that thing of Schwartz, you know, being the girlfriend of like, no, he's not that bad. Like, it's very weird to see. And Katie is just sitting there kind of with a smile on her face, listening to Schwartz do this, which he's done their entire relationship. And now she just doesn't she's not responsible for him anymore. So she doesn't have to do anything in these moments. And Ari goes, listen, I gave up on you a long time ago and my life is better for it. OK, I love that for you. So good luck. Yeah, same to you. Everything anyone says to you about any of this shit is always going to fall on deaf ears. You're a lost cause. Okay, don't speak for the whole group. You're not the queen of the group. Come on, like your ego is getting a little like... And she goes, now it's my ego. Yeah. Okay, dude. And Lala, Ariana goes, Shorts is very clearly using confusing strength and boundaries with ego. And I think that's an important thing too. Schwartz is confusing strength and boundaries with ego. And the funny thing is... Is that like the man with the biggest ego, his BFF, is the one he really should be talking to here. But this is where Ariana, through the audience, is potentially going to get in trouble because she says very clear boundaries and says things that are very true. And if you're going to upset that bubble, she will say exactly that it's offensive. And I do not know why she will get, I don't understand why she'll get hate for it, except that people will take things on face value and go, oh, that does sound harsh. That sounds harsh. And Schwartz is being so nice here. But you have to understand there's reasons behind that. He can put a smiley face on and be all, all shucks, all shucks, like he does. And it works every time. But Ariana has proof in the pudding of exactly why she's behaving the way she's behaving. And I wish the only thing I wish that Schwartz had said instead of queen of the group of like the being the, Oh, you're not like the number one girl in the group. I would have loved it. So then we could have cut to Jax's number one guy in the group. Um, which was like, yeah, she's like speaking on behalf of the whole, whole group. And Kate goes, Katie goes, she can, because that's how we feel. And Ari goes, no, I'm not making decisions for anyone else, but myself, if I don't want to be around my ex, I literally don't fucking have to. 
And this is why I think it's going to be harder for Arianda to stay on the show. But Arianda goes, this is going to be some situation where you bridge some sort of gap and he comes back into the fold. This isn't my ego telling other people what to do. And she goes, I'm sorry, I said that. I just missed the old group dynamic. And Ariana goes, no one destroyed that but him. Okay, you guys, it's like I'm having a conversation and you're all ganging up on me. And Katie goes, release yourself from this fucking torture. I don't really have anything to say. I guess, can I talk about being sober curious more? Oh, man, not good. Not good, Schwartz. Fucking idiot, man. Fucking idiot. Oh, woe is me. It's hard, though, because Ariana actually has things to back up everything that she says. But Schwartz will always win because he's cute and, uh, you know, not su- he's pseudo like he wants like this. group. Oh, I miss the group dynamic. Do you really do you really miss this group dynamic? It would tell me which season of group dynamic do you miss? Because there's been fucked up things. Every- In fact, you should be like. I don't miss this group dynamic. And my God, just sitting here makes me realize how much I don't miss this group dynamic. I mean, at the end of the day, I just wish they were able to say things of like, come on, just for the fucking show. I was told to invite all you guys to Wolf. Please, Lisa wants to get the promo in of her restaurant. Why are you giving me a hard time? I had to come here and invite everybody because Kyle Chan couldn't remember the lines. Why are you blaming me? (laughs) So... We come back from commercial. We're still at Sir. And um, everybody's just dancing. Oh, little JK remix. All right. One, two. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His shirt's like unbuttoned down to his navel. And she's like, I got to go take a shit. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll save the seats. Santa goes, this place has always been so tumultuous back in the day, dude. It was always like shit hitting the fan, dude. And Kyle's like, Lisa said, this is where you bring your mistress. Yeah, I brought Rachel here many times, dude. And this is so funny. This is so staged. Sheena walks by, and I know the layout of Sir because I'm psycho, and Sheena doesn't have to walk by this area to get, but Sheena walks by in her sunglasses, and Tom goes, hey, Sheena. And she like walks by, like she like turns around and she gives like an iconic look with her sunglasses on. (laughs) He's like, I didn't even recognize you, Sheena. And she's like, mm hmm. Her slips, mm hmm. Can I talk to you for a second? And Sheena's like, I mean, not right here. I'm going to the bathroom. So I can meet you in the back. I'm just not doing it here. So we finally, and he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, the back. That's cool too. And I was talking to her. She's like, Ariana is my best friend. I, ha- I have her back. I have nothing to say to Sandoval that I haven't said to his face. So why he wants to have a conversation with me in, in public at Sir of all places is beyond me. Now, this is hysterical. By the way, if I was Sheena, I would be like, not even in the alleyway. Let's go a couple blocks down. Let's like literally go into Culver City area and have that conversation there. But also it made me think too, the Sir Alleyway, you know, if you've been there, it's like, you know, it makes it look massive, but it's not because the camera kind of expands everything. But I just thought, first off, the the people like, did they put a fence up so the people walking by? Because if I walked by and I saw Sandoval and Sheena having a conversation, I would have lost my shit. So like, I also then thought, wouldn't it be funny if they built a Sir soundstage or like the Sir set or like in a soundstage so they didn't have to worry about pest like like so this is my I'm going to do a conspiracy theory that is not true in any way shape or form but please pass it around they built a Sir Alley uh set on a uh, Universal Studios soundstage let's just start that rumor it's that this this is a controlled environment they just couldn't there was too many people taking pictures but anyways they're in the Sir Alleyway and you guys it's just such a sentimental place for me. And I'm not even joking. I've had so many great memories in the Sir Alleyway. I remember the first birthday I had in the pandemic. My friend Mallory uh, came down and we had drinks in the Sir Alley during the day. That's how that's how that's how sad the uh, the pandemic was. But it was such a great, great time. Great memories. Uh, I mean, my mom and dad were in the Sir Alleyway and I made them act like they were fighting. Uh, you know, it's those silly things. That's what I like about myself is I kind of like silly things like this. I like what they represent. I like to reach room at Buca de Beppo. I mean, these things make me smile. So I love to see the Sir Alleyway and Tom comes out in his skater boy sweater and he's like, Hey, um, I, but oh, also by the way, uh, Tom like went behind the bar and poured these drinks. Like, is he allowed to just hop behind the bar? Like, Hey, Hey buddy. Hey. 
you're not on payroll. That's uh, that's that's no, no, no. You don't just get a hop behind the bar. Not after Scandal. But anyways, he comes out. He's like, um, I got you a vodka soda because I was getting a diet coke because uh, I'm not drinking. I thought, you know, but he, he and she's like, I'm actually three weeks sober today, but thank you. I had this weird feeling that you weren't drinking for some reason. I love that Sandoval was like, I had a premonition that you weren't drinking. And so they sit down, they look at each other. And the last time was that scene from Scandoval that was on film besides the reunion. And they just stared at each other. You look like you kind of rode in on this Shania Twain motorcycle. Like, you know, that video where she's like, um, and she goes, thank you. And Santa goes, is that what you were going for? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, Y2K look. And he's like, this is the Y2K sweater, dude. It's Ali. And then it's, it's his, it's his friend's sweater. And she goes, yeah, I didn't expect getting blocked. I love that Tom brings up his friend and I don't know. I don't know how they edited it. Maybe Sheena did say something, but they, instead of saying like, I'm so sorry about your friend, she goes to, I didn't expect to be blocked when I reached out about your friend, you know, it's like, if I didn't expect, listen, your friend is one thing. I didn't expect to be blocked. And by the way, summer moon, how did, and we didn't even get a, and how dare you block summer moon, even though we know she blocked, you know, he blocked Sheena and Sheena runs all those accounts. So it blocked all those accounts. That's how Instagram works. Um, but I do like that they can still bond on small moments like fashion of like, oh, I knew you were going for a Y2K look, dude. Yeah. And she's like, thank you. Thank you for noticing. Anywho, I did not expect to be blocked. So she's like, I just don't understand when somebody so near dear and you passed away, I was blocked. He's like, I understand that. I appreciate that. I was not in a good place that day. And I haven't been in a lot of days for 10 years now. I felt that maybe you were just doing it to like say that you did. And she goes, see, I, I would think after 14 years of friendship, you know, you would know me better than that and know me that reaching out was genuine because I have a heart. Sandoval's like, whoa, you have not been acting like you have a heart. Everything that I do is looked at in the most negative way possible. Like my band, it's great. And she's like, but don't you think if you would have been honest and remorseful from the beginning, it could have been a different outcome. I like that Sandoval like, oh, touche. Listen, that's what I'm saying. People make fun of Sheena, but Sheena actually, that's a solid fucking point. Like, you know, Sheena actually spits some truth if you would handle it in a different way. And he's like, yeah, dude, I've just, I've handled this like shit. And he goes, I, I can't do anything about the path. And Sheena goes, you can be apologized and be remorseful. You don't need to keep doubling down and acting like the villain, Tom. And he goes, Sheena, I have apologized to you. I've apologized so so heartedly at the heart. I think he was trying to say wholeheartedly, but he said so heartedly. And I like that. And then we flash back to four months earlier with that conversation in the Marina Del Rey with the, the dirty couch. He's like, I feel really bad about the stuff that I said to you as well, Sheena. And she goes, it's not just me, Tom. I would love to talk to Ariana. I would love to. Because out of everybody, she has been a hundred times less proactively vindictive which is weird to me because she's the one that I did it to. And she has every right to come after me and do all that stuff. But Ariana doesn't get off on that shit. She doesn't want to see me fucking drag to the point of fucking like, uh, and this is, you know, his darkness. And she goes, nobody wants to see that Tom. He goes, I know, but it's been fucking relentless. I get like you're doing podcasts for money, but at a certain point it's like too much. I like that. He's talking about it. Like it's like, only fans you're doing podcasts for money oh and she goes yeah but then we stopped i just think you really need to humble yourself and the next show you play maybe leave schwartz and raquel's name out of the songs like the shirt off the singing of schwartz losing his house schwartz's mom raquel is hot for me and we see pictures of him performing and she goes somebody needs to tell him to put the mic down everything you're doing tom is literally the definition of a narcissist. And he goes, if not, you should look it up, dude. A narcissist is never going to admit there's a narcissist. Yeah, I know, dude. That's why Lala won't say she is. And she goes, well, she's not. And that's offensive. And then she goes, I need to get a home for my daughter. So that was a breaking point for Sheena. But my advice to you is to humble yourself and to have some humility, okay? No one is wishing any harm to come to you or her. Speaking about Rachel. She's like, I want to make that clear. He goes, you should know after that Nima interview, I really had to talk her down. I just want you to know that. 
And Sheena goes, but she said it, Tom. This was never meant to be about a podcast, she says in a talking head, where we're attacking or hurting Tom or Raquel. Neiman and I wanted to do a podcast and put the truth out there because I'm not going to have people saying that I'm making up a rumor. And then we cut back to four months earlier, that Scandal episode where she's talking about Nima saying she told this person at Coachella that Tom made a comment to her that they were in an open relationship. And this is why Rachel is the key to this whole thing and why people should listen to her podcast to find out these blanks, to see how honest she can be. Tom goes, but is it really your business? And she goes, well, when my character is being questioned, yes, it is my business. And Tom goes, but it wouldn't have ever had to have been had you not brought it up to begin with. And she goes, it would never have been if you hadn't fucked Raquel to begin with. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And then Tom goes, all right, no, that's going to be a thing. Tom goes, I would say out of everyone, the loss of Sheena's and I's relationship has been devastating to me. Sheena's a friend. You know, she's all heart. She's funny. She's a great pop singer. I miss her. And by the way, you guys, the song, just stop to listen to the lyrics. It goes, always, I guess I'm just trash. Throw me away. I'm in last instead of first place. How did we get here? Whoa, oh, oh, oh. How did we get here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we see inner cut shots of Tom slowly walking into the Sir alleyway up into the doorway of Sir with the friend group having fun fun in the other room with Ariana and this song how did we get here -la -la -la. I guess I'm just trash I ruined lightning bolts how did we get here feel bad for me oh funny oh just glorious what an amazing ending I know I don't even know if people caught that song but it was so good I mean, I just imagine producers going, hey, we need a soul song uh, talking about how do we get here? And the guy's like, oh, yeah, I can do it. Let's whip it out. So that was episode three, you guys. And I don't know, you know, uh, it, that was a really very dark episode. But also, I love when people, and especially the cast of Vanderpump Rules, when they throw around narcissism. Um, and uh, I love that Tom gets a shot in on Lala of like, yeah, I've looked it up, you know, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's why Lala won't admit she's won. Like, gets a shot at Lala across the board. Uh, Sandoval really doesn't like Lala. He even kind of bagged on her at Nick Vile's podcast too, right? So we'll see. But now I love also Tom of like, I miss Sheena's friendship the most. And I think that's patently bullshit. And I think that appeals to Sheena's ego. And he's playing the right card there because that shit probably will work with Sheena because she really is that kind of person that's all heart and will take you at face value. And she loves to be talked about and she loves to be told that people like her. So of course that's going to work with Sheena. Like, I feel like each person has their thing. And like when Sheena hears that, I bet she watched that and goes, oh, that's really nice. Like that she, you know, without thinking about any other kind of underpinnings of that statement. Anyways, you guys, um, listen, there's a Vanderpump Rules after show that's 22 minutes that uh, there's great things where Sheena where Tom actually makes fun of Sheena's screaming at the emo night when it's just so so funny that he has no realization that he screams at his shows too. So it's like, he should not comment on Sheena's performance or singing at all after his own performances, but who knows tomato, tomato, right? This was uh fun. I hope you had fun. I know we talked about some serious stuff. Uh, I hope you had a great Valentine's day. I hope you're still having fun with this. Um, you know, I'm trying to find the fun in it, but it, it's hard when you're talking about deep, dark stuff. And I really, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, let me know. Uh, email me at so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey at gmail.com. If you like this show, rate it five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and join up the patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. Uh, I did a special episode uh, recapping traders. I'm going to be doing Thursday's episode of traders that'll be out there on Friday. And we're planning some special things for the Patreon exclusively where I'll be able to kind of expand on some shows that I'm not able, not able to exp expand on here. Um, so please join us over there for five bucks a month. You can make sure that I can get better basketball shorts to put on my large body. 
Uh, anyways, that's it, you guys. I always feel so unfulfilled after these because I'm like, I just want it to be over. It's everything's ugh. okay. Bye.